Hey everyone, this is Phil. And over five years ago today, we published our five tips for new Airsoft players video. It's one of our most watched videos. It's how a lot of you have found and hopefully subscribed to our YouTube channel. And I like to think that our content has gotten better since then. What I'm gonna be doing today is looking at this video again, and it's been a very long time since I actually watched this video. And I'll be providing some commentary about the things that we're recommending, some of the tips that we're sharing. And I'll talk a little bit about what I think might be the same and what we might tell new players differently today. Um, and really, I mean, five years is a long time for things to change. I mean, our camo, our kit, our guns have changed. The community has changed. We've seen a lot of players come and go since we released this video. So I'm excited to get into it and to look back on, you know, five years ago, what we thought our top tips for beginners would be and what they might be today. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Phil, SO1. So winter's almost over Still here look in St. John's. Just about the same, I think. Start <laughs> very shortly. Uh, that means the airsoft season is going to pick up when we're going to start seeing a lot of new players hit the field. My so we thought it'd be a great 1694, my elastic cummerbund. In the airsoft field. So tip number one is also going to be a gear suggestion, and that is a good pair of boots. So yep. A lot of new airsoft players hit the field with whatever pair of footwear they have available to them, either sneakers or low-cut work boots. You're going to want to make sure you get a pair of boots that has really good ankle support. In airsoft, yep. you're going to be a Still lot, true. a lot of running forwards and backwards, but also lateral. And there's a lot of opportunities for you to roll your ankles. So make sure you get something with really good ankle support that'll help protect yourself on the field. So yeah, absolutely, that is still true. It's one of our biggest recommendations for new players is make sure you get appropriate footwear for Airsoft. Now, when we recorded this at the time, we were really thinking about military style boots. Uh, those ones that I was using in the video are Black Hawk um, Warrior Wear Desert Boots, I think, and I wore those for years. Pat wore the same. I know one of our friends, uh, he was deployed to Afghanistan, same boots that he wore as well. Uh, so there's, at the time, we really felt that, well, we are playing soldiers, so we need to wear what soldiers wear. And while you will certainly be well served by a pair of military boots, either surplus or, you know, uh, bought off Amazon or whatever, uh, the reality is that a lot of soldiers today, whenever possible, will actually gravitate to more, towards more of a civilian hiking boot whenever possible. So like a Salomon or a Merrill or whatever, if their unit will allow it. I know uh, Grantham talks about this in one of his older videos. Um, Civilian footwear has a bunch of different um, characteristics that make it better in some cases than military boots. So firstly, military boots tend to be designed in a lot of cases by the lowest bidder. So you're not necessarily getting the best quality footwear. Now, it could be cheaper, that's for sure, especially if you're getting a pair of used boots or something like that. Uh, but civilian hikers will be, generally speaking, better quality. They will also be tend to be significantly lighter, which is a huge advantage when you think about comfort and fatigue and stuff like that. Having a lighter weight shoe will absolutely be beneficial. You can also get them in Gore-Tex, waterproof, etc., just like, you know, real military boots as well. Um, but you can get hikers that have all of those features really straight out of the box. And the price point, while it will be more expensive than a military shoe, will still be generally pretty acceptable. And you'll get a lot of years out of use for them. And you can use them for other stuff than airsoft. You can take them hiking and so on and so forth. So... Today, we would not necessarily recommend a military style boot, but we would certainly recommend any sort of hiking work boot type situation that provides you with really good ankle support that's pretty lightweight and it will be durable for, you know, as long as you can foresee, especially if you only wear them playing airsoft, they should last you for several years before you have to swap them out. Tip number two is learn how to hold your gun. So a lot of us coming into Airsoft the first time, we don't have any military or police experience. We only have what we've seen on TV and in movies. And that's not necessarily the best point of reference to learn how to hold your firearm. So what you end up seeing on mm, the field shouldn't have said fire. Players, is players who either chicken win by holding their arm out to the side like this, or who still hold true. their gun by the magwell. So number one is take that chicken wing and tuck it right into your body. Mm -hmm. That'll make your profile a lot smaller on the side. So I'm just going to stop for a second here. That is absolutely still true. So making sure that you tuck your elbow into your body when you're coming around from piece of cover is 
one of the uh, pieces of advice we still give lots of beginners because you know if you have that elbow stuck out it is going to be shot no question so tucking it in absolutely one of the critical pieces to cover now uh, you saw me cringe a little i think we are playing with airsoft guns we are not playing with firearms so it's i think very important for us especially as a channel to disassociate ourselves with the fact that things that we do in airsoft necessarily translate to firearms it's not at all the same thing um and it's important to to make that really clear and if you're peeking around a piece of cover you're gonna be a lot less likely to get hit in the arm as well make sure you're not holding your gun by the mag grip what's well, 10 people tend to do this because either the mag is not feeding properly or they just feel it's more comfortable mm -hmm. if you feel that it's too hard to reach to the front of your gun collapse your stock inwards and make sure you get a good grip on the front gripping the gun on the front makes it a lot easier for you to maneuver that barrel and stop when you're transitioning targets if for some reason your mag is so i'm just going to pause it here so Absolutely, we still recommend that you grip the rifle as far forward as you can. This gives you as much control over the muzzle as you can conceivably get. With respect to collapsing the stock to get a better grip on your gun, we wouldn't generally advise this. As much as possible, you want your stock as extended as far back as you can to make sure that you have a proper, comfortable grip on your pistol grip with your primary hand, right? Your dominant hand. Um, in, there are certainly use cases where you can collapse the stock in. Now, John, for example, on our team talks about collapsing the stock in tight corners and stuff. But we're talking about your 80% of the time, like your main setup for your airsoft rifle. You should have the stock as far for, as far back, as, as extended as you can, and grip the rifle as far forward as possible. Now, we did get lots of comments about gripping the uh, airsoft gun by the magwell lots of people say oh real steel shooters grab it by the magwell i grab it by the magwell there's nothing wrong with that navy seals do it and blah 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 absolutely right um it's not that you should never grab your gun by the magwell i think uh, i think about cal for example on our team who's a phenomenal airsoft player but he's also a real steel shooter he's active duty, duty military does he sometimes grab his airsoft rifle by the magwell sure he does it's more comfortable sometimes it just helps him uh, to just get a bit of rest when he's on the field if he's holding a position for a really long time if you're transitioning it might be easier for you in some cases does it mean that he does it all the time no it doesn't there are does it mean that it's wrong to do it at any particular given time also no we're not saying that if you ever grip your rifle by the magwell then you're instantly a noob or something like that that's not the intent but what we're saying is most of the time you should be grabbing your rifle as far forward as possible have your stock extended as far back to give you the most control over the muzzle and, and in fact grabbing the rifle by the front can certainly help reduce muzzle fa uh, muscle fatigue in certain cases so anyways let's keep going magazines don't feed in your gun properly uh, and you need to hold them in place in order for that to happen what i recommend you do is get a bit of painter's tape and just tape your mags as you can see you can't even see that yeah. the mag has been painted what's inserted in the mag well however it will hold it in place for you if you really don't like seeing the green you can always spray paint it but i find it's easier to find my mags on the field too when there's a strip of green safety tape on it so yeah, that's certainly true. Um, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that particular method anymore. Uh, I've had lots of feeding issues with my guns and I just use a little bit of uh, soft Velcro. So like the, the loop side, and I put a little bit of that on the inside of the mag well, and that provides enough friction to keep the mag in position. You can certainly use painter's tape, but I wouldn't necessarily re recommend that anymore. Just a little bit of Velcro goes a long way. That way you don't need to paint. Uh, you don't need to put painter's tape on all of your mags. Just one little bit of Velcro and off you go. Tip number three is learn how to use your cover correctly. So again, yeah. from TV and movies, we always see SWAT guys and army soldiers coming up army to soldiers. cover like this, and they're like, they're holding right next to it. That doesn't really work in the real world. What you want to do is make sure that your piece of cover that's in front of you is, as much as you can, about an arm's length from you. This allows you to keep your gun up when you're behind that piece of cover, rather than down. If I'm my gun is down and I'm coming out of a piece of cover, the first thing I need to do is bring my gun up. However, if I'm already with my gun up behind a piece of cover, when I come out, the first thing I can do is shoot that gun. So, you want to... So yeah, uh, this is still one of the biggest pieces of advice we give players is to stand back from the cover, make sure you keep your rifle up, and when you're emerging from cover, you're emerging with the rifle up and ready to engage. Some players will tell you, um, oh, I can't do that because if I do that, I'll get shot or whatever. The likelihood of you getting shot because you are, you know, a foot or two feet back from the piece of cover compared to with your face up 
and against it is really low. Um, yeah, sure, if you're taking a withering volume of fire or something like that, then yeah, maybe you do need to be up against that piece of cover. But nine times out of 10, I'm standing off from the cover and I'm not getting shot any more than if I was completely facing eyes into it. But what I'm getting is the opportunity to keep my rifle up and ready to engage the second I'm coming out. Does it mean that I always do that? No, there's tons of times where I just stick my head out of the side of, of a piece of cover just to look. But when you're in a position where you are relatively certain that you'll have a target to engage, it is absolutely still the best practice to keep your rifle up and ready to engage and when you're emerging from cover whenever possible. You want to make sure that you're at an arm's length. The other reason for that is because of your peripheral vision. Yeah. If you're behind a piece of cover and the cover is right up to your face, all you can see is that piece of cover. However, if you stand back about a couple of feet from it, you still benefit from the cover that it's providing to you, but you can sort of see around on the sides. You get a much better sense of your battlefield awareness. Tip number so yeah, again, this is still part of that last piece and it's totally, totally true. You need to stand off from your cover to give yourself the best situational awareness that you can get. Now, obviously, most of the time in Airsoft, we're fighting targets that are directly in front of us. And if you have a target that's off to your side and you know they're there, yet obviously you don't want to stand off from that piece of cover and expose yourself to them. But in nine times out of 10, you'll be able to take a couple of steps back and suddenly you can see a little bit above your piece of cover. You can see off to one side, you can see off to the other side. And it, it has almost never resulted in me actually getting shot in situations where otherwise I would have uh, survived if I'd been pressed up against a piece of cover. So try it for yourself. If you're a new player this is absolutely something that you can take on and start using and it will give you an edge when you're playing so let's keep going number four is don't be afraid to go prone now a lot of us don't like going prone because it's dirty you get on the deck and it's full of mud and all this kind of stuff and that might be the case however we encourage everyone to go prone as much as they can when there's not any available cuff for them the reason for that is because of the way airsoft guns work airsoft guns have a hop up which imparts a backspin on the bb now when the bb is fired flat the backspin pushes the bb upwards and gravity pushes the bb downwards which means gives it a very flat trajectory however if you shoot a bb gun at an angle let's say downwards, that backspin isn't just going up anymore, it's going up and out. So what that means is that gravity doesn't have the same effect as it really does a flat shot trajectory. I've done a diagram for this part now it's in retrospect. That those BBs are going to fly right over you instead of hitting you. Yeah, this is still true, although I'm not necessarily sure if I would give all this advice to a new player. So yeah, obviously, yes, your hop-up is imparting a backspin on your BB, and if you're shooting it downwards at an angle, that hop-up is going up and out. So that, that part is still true. However, in practice, we're going to be shooting at targets that are, let's say, on average 100 feet away, right? Like 30 meters away or something like that. At that range, you really will not see that benefit you meaningfully on the airsoft field. If your target is really close, absolutely, it's gonna be much harder for you to, much harder for you to hit them. But at a longer range, especially since you're not gonna be angling your gun downwards like this at, an, at a longer range, like instead of shooting straight, you might be shooting like this, right? Just a very slight, that part, you're really not gonna to see too much of a benefit. Is it an advantage? I'm sure it can be. But the biggest advantage of going prone is that your silhouette is now, you know, one fourth of the size of it when it's standing or it's you know kneeling behind a piece of cover. There's also situations where you, sure, you might not have enough cover to kneel behind, but in some cases you can, but you choose to go prone because it gives you an edge when you're coming out. Your opponent's not expecting you to come out at ground level. So there's a lot of different reasons why going prone is advantageous to you on the field, and you shouldn't be afraid of getting dirty to, uh, avoid, uh, to you know, avoid going prone. But absolutely still a good piece of advice we talk about it and you know how to maximize your survivability on the field how to avoid getting hit going prone is is a, is a great way to do that is it a piece of advice that i would give new players all the time now nah, you got other stuff to be worried about when you're a new player than going prone but it's certainly sound advice so going prone has a tremendous advantage in airsoft not just in making your silhouette smaller but also making sure that the bb guns don't actually hit you because of the backspin yep. tip number five is extremely important in terms of the longevity of your gear and that is make sure you unload your mags when you get home after every game when you look at an mm. airsoft magazine it has a spring that runs all throughout the inside here 
Now, when you leave BBs in there, the spring is compressed. And over time, if your BBs are loaded in there for a very long time, when you remove the BBs, the spring will not have the same tension. It'll be much harder for those mags to push the BBs into your gun. So we got some comments about this when, uh, when the video was first released. It's not clear um, in terms of the actual mechanics of it, whether compression of the spring makes it degrade over time or whether constant compression and decompression is what makes it wear over time. Uh, fundamentally, if you're a new player, are you likely going to be using mid caps like I am in this video or like a real caps even? Probably not. Like you're going to be using the, the high cap that came with your gun. And in those cases, you don't have a spring going through the entire mag. You have a, a reservoir of BBs and you have that sort of spring mechanism that pushes the BBs, uh, BBs up, the mechanism that you wind. Uh, and in those cases, unloading the spring is not particularly necessary. If you're playing every week or you're playing twice a week, do you really need to unload your mag between games? Like if you play a game on Saturday and you're playing a game Wednesday, do you need to unload those those BBs? I mean, probably not. Is it value added? I mean, maybe. For me, the biggest thing and the reason why I still do this is because I, assuming my mags didn't get wet or damp or moist in any way, and the BBs, uh, the bio BBs that are inside haven't been compromised, I can just reclaim those BBs and reuse them later. Uh, so that's the reason why I empty my mags. But Ultimately, whether this it wears down the spring over time, not really sure. And in any case, would we recommend this as one of the top tips for new airsoft players? If they're using mid caps, then sure. But chances are they have a real cap, or excuse me, a high cap. So it's probably less likely that this will be relevant for a, a brand new airsoft player. So when you get home, make sure you press on the little tab here and eject the BBs into a bag or some sort of container. You'll be able to use them again later for sure, and it'll help with the longevity of your mags and make sure that you can keep using them for a really long time. So that's it for our top five tips. Just to recap, number one, make sure you get a good set of boots. Number two, learn how to properly hold your gun. Number three, use your cover effectively. I remember struggling four, to remember these don't lines. Don't be afraid to go prone. And number five, make sure you go and unload your mags after every game. Yeah. If you have any other questions, comments, leave them in the box below. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and leave us any questions you might have. Take care. Yeah, so overall, for five tips for beginners, it's not too, too bad. I think going prone is not necessarily something that I would mention, you know, if it's your first time out. And then unloading your mags is probably not something that we would mention nowadays to to most beginners. One of the things that we would absolutely talk about today is eye protection. Um, especially if you've played one or two games of Airsoft and you're wearing whatever eye protection you could get, unless you researched it, chances are you've dealt with fogging. And so you're going to look up anti-fog solutions for Airsoft and you will likely come across mesh goggles. And we would tell you Avoid mesh goggles at all costs. We've talked about it in the podcast. We've done previous videos about it. We only have one set of, set of eyes and your mesh eye pro is not going to protect your eyes adequately. So for beginners, we always say, hey, if you're looking at eye pro, there's lots of recommendations we're happy to make, but you need to make sure that they are ANSI rated or if you're in Europe that they're EN. I think it's... Z87 or something rated in Europe. Anyways, the point is, make sure that they are ballistic rated eye protection, whatever it is that you wear. It could be shooting glasses, it could be military style glasses, depending on uh, what your field requires. But that would be certainly one of the things that we would talk to beginners about uh, in, in today's uh, airsoft scene. The other thing that we would absolutely mention to beginners and consistently mention to beginners uh, is to try as much gear as possible. When you're going to the airsoft field, take a second to get to know some of your fellow airsoft players. If they have gear that you're interested in, just go and ask them and talk to them about it. Learn what you can. Most airsofters will let you, at, you know, at least look at their gear and talk about it. Uh, and, you know, pre-COVID, they might even let you handle their gun and shoot it and so on and so forth. But it's a really good way to explore what's available to get people honest opinions about whether something works for them or doesn't work for them and what they like and dislike. And it's just a really good opportunity to broaden your horizons and not pigeonhole yourself as a brand new airsoft player. You know, you might see us using primarily M4s and that's what you go and you never explore anything else. And then you suddenly one day pick up an AK-47 and you're like, wow, I like this way better. Well, it would have been great for you to find that out, you know, at the start of your career. So when you're going to the field, get take a second to know, you know, get to know the other players, try as much gear as possible. As a beginner, getting as much exposure will help you figure out what you enjoy, what you enjoy more, what you enjoy less, and so on, and make good purchasing decisions that help you stay interested in Airsoft as long as possible. 
Um, so guys, that's it for today's video. If you like this format, if you like us uh, looking at some of our older videos and providing commentary, please let us know in the comments. If you like them, we'll make some more. We'll get some of the other guys to come in and give some comments about videos that they've done in the past. Um, and as well, if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe. We have a lot of you guys who are still not subscribed. So please, if you like this content, do take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. It does help us out tremendously. As well, if you want to keep the conversation going, we have our Discord. The link is in the description below. It's super active. We have tons of players in there from all around the world talking about their fields, airsoft gear, guns, everything in between. So please come check us out. And until next time, guys, that's all we have for you. We'll talk to you later.